In the 1960s, this corner of the Cotswolds earned a place on the literary map of Britain. And it was all thanks to a local lad, Laura Lee. He was one of the most popular British writers of the last century. And his autobiographical novels sold in their millions. His first book, Cider with Rosie, was set here in Slad, and it's all about growing up in the village in the 1930s. Laura Lee's stories about helping out with the haymaking or skating on the village pond are interwoven with stories about family drama, like the death of his sister, and it's a wonderful insight into coming of age in a bygone era. A village grows out of a wood. In my great-grandfather's day, only a car track led here. And for 20 years, it was all I knew of the world. The author's earliest memory is at age three, when his family moves into the village. Lee gets lost in the thicket of tall grass and begins to panic. I was lost and didn't know where to move. A tropic heat oozed up from the ground, rank with sharp odours of roots and nettles. High overhead ran frenzied larks, screaming as though the sky were tearing apart. But soon enough, Lee was rescued and brought back to the new house. And this is it. It was a good place to be. Thick snug walls, rooks in the chimneys, frogs in the cellars, mushrooms on the ceiling, and all for three and sixpence a week. Lee paints a wonderful picture of his chaotic madcap family, his three brothers, three sisters, and his artistic, scatty, larger-than-life mother. The book follows Lee's scrapes and adventures as he grows up in Slad. And at the centre of village life, you have the local pub, the Woolpack, and right across the road from it, you have the Holy Trinity Church. And it was here, at the start of the book, that Laurie Lee describes himself as a scruffy choir boy, singing heartily, not always in tune. By the end, he's having his first taste of cider and about to become a young man when he encounters the Rosie in the book's title. Never to be forgotten that first long secret drink of golden fire, juice of those valleys and of that time, wine of wild orchards, of russet summer, of plump red apples and Rosie's burning cheeks. Adam Horowitz grew up in Slad and knew Lee as a child. I asked him what he knows about Rosie. Laurie didn't ever reveal in his lifetime who Rosie was. It could have been a distant cousin of his, it could have been a woman who lived out in the middle of the valley with no electricity, who babysat me when I was a baby. There were so <laughs> many people it could have been, and I don't think Laurie ever wanted to reveal it. He wanted Rosie to be as archetypal as the valley. But he didn't write it to him? No, he wrote it in London because he'd moved to London early on and as he got older, into his 40s, I think the sense of nostalgia about that lost childhood and the way things had changed post-Second World War, it all just started to come back and this lyrical, beautiful book came flooding out yeah. and kind of drew him back to the valley. Yeah, he used to drink just round here. Just round here, yes. There's an apocryphal story about a tourist who came and uh, accosted him outside the pub, not knowing who he was, and said, could you tell me where Laurie Lee is buried? <laughs> and he looked at them up and down, pointed to the pub and said, Go in there later, you'll find him buried in a pint. <laughs> That's a wonderful story. With his royalties from Cider with Rosie, Lee purchased woodlands here in the Slad Valley. This year, on what would have been the author's 99th birthday, the woods opened as a protected nature reserve, thanks to donations from fans of the book. We put out this public appeal and we were just blown away by the response we had, right from little grannies who'd given us a little bit more of their pension, right the way through to Americans who'd read the book in high school who wanted to contribute. So it shows you that link between the landscape and the book is really, really powerful. Since its first publication in 1959, Cider with Rosie has never been out of print. Laura Lee has made this magical valley famous, but he's also been instrumental in preserving its natural beauty for generations to come.